Hello, and welcome to Credit Matters. I'm Steve Dreyer, Standard & Poor's Corporate Ratings. Today, I'm here with Anish Prabhu, Senior Analyst in our Utilities and Infrastructure Practice, to talk about the recent announcement by AES Corporation to make an all-cash bid for DPL, the parent company of Dayton Power and Light, a regulated electric utility. Uh, Anish, before we get started on the deal, tell us about AES, what business they're in, and how this fits with their strategy. Sure. AES is a true international diversified company. It operates in over 29 different locations around the world, mostly in North America, a lot of it in Latin America. Their presence in Africa and also gro a growing presence in Asia, in the Asia Pacific region. Uh, they are in contracted generation, um, and co and long term contracted uh, businesses is, is, is their mainstay at the moment. Although they are still in competitive markets where they they have merchant assets, and they are into integrated utilities. At the moment, their bias is towards. Uh, taking assets which are either in alternative energy sources, such as wind and solar, uh, but uh, acquiring assets uh, which reduce their overall cash flow profile in terms of the quality of cash flow is also a part of their strategies. Now, the interesting thing about them is they are, they are heavily into alternative investments like solar and wind, like I mentioned, but they do a lot of fossil generations, and they are currently constructing two coal plants um, outside of the U.S. So primarily a what we would call a merchant company, a, a, an unregulated power company, a power developer, global. Um, some years ago, they acquired a regulated electric utility, Ipalco, uh, Indianapolis Power co uh, Company's parent. Uh, this new acquisition, I suppose, is continuation of that uh, trend towards buying, what, more stable assets um, relative to their overall portfolio? Yeah, like I mentioned, uh, the Utility asset are part of their part of their uh, strategy. The interesting thing is that between the Ip Palco and, and Dayton Power and Light, you know, the driving distance is just about two hours. So they are contiguous in that sense. Uh, they are in different jurisdictions in terms of uh, state regulatory uh, reviews. But uh, you know, over time, I'm sure there could be some some synergies uh, in the two businesses. But again not something that uh, is, is what we would consider as strays from the strategy. So let's talk about this deal. We have a double B rated company acquiring an A minus rated company. Um, but we didn't do kind of the normal thing here where there's a credit watch negative and credit watch positive involved. It's actually credit watch negative on both entities. So why, why that action? Well, the reason for our uh, difference, uh, the, uh, this, the one on DPL is pretty simple. They, they will be significant leveraging at the DPL hold call level. Now, one thing I need to explain here is that there will be insulation. That's what the management has represented. But much like Ipalco, the ring fencing will be between AES and the parent company, in this case, DPL. So there is no ring fencing, if you will, between DPL and DPNL. Now, for, for rate-making purposes, regulators look at the capital structure of DPNL. But, uh, since there is no ring fencing between DPL and DPNL, we consolidate that debt that would come on, on the parent company, in this case about one and a quarter billion dollars, to come up with the financial metrics. And that's going to result in the downgrade of DPL and DPNL. And that's why they're on credit report was negative. For AES, the reason is different. Uh, we, we do know that about a year ago, in March of 2010, they had got about one and a half billion dollars of equity investment from CIC, China Investment Corporation. And they'd used that to temporarily pay down debt. We, we, we knew that that was a temporary pay down. But at the pace at which they have leveraged back, um, that has been a surprise to us. Uh, we did expect leveraging back, but, not, but we expected that over a period of time. And, and this is going to be significant. Uh, they are incrementally going to be about 700 million higher than the pre-2010 level. But because they had paid a significant amount of that equity proceeds towards, towards debt, they will be raising about $2 billion of, of uh, senior sec unsecured debt. And, th and that leveraging up I is the concern. Okay. So where we're going to end up here, it sounds like, is AES overall having potentially a lower rating than it does today at double B. Among its assets, two 
holding companies that own regulated electric utilities in the U.S. Uh, both of those remaining investment grade, most likely, but at the low end of investment grade. is sort of where we see that coming. That is correct. And that has to do with the ring fencing structure that you mentioned between AES and uh, and, and the DPL group of companies. What the ring fence structure does is to insulate the credits. And that will, uh, depending on the, on the, on the construct of the ring fencing, will, will, will basically uh, determine the notches. Gotcha. Well, thank you, Anish. And thank you for watching. I'm Steve Dreyer for Standard & Poor's.